Okay, so we got the video recording started rather. I'm gonna set the, it's gonna say mood, but it's not just mood. Remind ourselves that we're in relationship with each of the members of the Godhead, that we're seated on the bench. Cast our care upon God for anything that we might be carrying with anxiety or worry or concern. And we invite all those that are part of today's mandate. Don't have a mandate yet, so we'll seek the mandate as a bench here at the beginning. Does anybody sense the presence of any particular person or being or member of the Godhead? I sense uh, Jesus and Melchizedek. Wonderful. And I have this strange ringing and heat in my right ear. I don't know if, what, if that means anything. Hmm. Well, um, it may have something to do with the bench gathering tonight and we'll keep that possibility in mind but also I do have tinnitus in my right ear so it could be a healing anointing especially with the heat so we'll keep that possibility in mind also I'm seeing a pennant. It has the looks of a, um, I forget the term for it. It begins with a G. I'm thinking of uh, American West uh, cavalry patrols. And the guy up front is carrying this flag on a pole. And it's usually, I'll just share a screen here briefly. And it usually looks like this. or sometimes like this. And that's what I'm seeing. Again, there's a term for it. It begins with G and I forget what it is offhand. Anybody else seeing, sensing, hearing? Knowing, give me a moment here. I was uh, being tapped on the shoulder to turn, turn around and look, but uh, in the spirit. Okay, you're turning around to look in the spirit to see what you see. I feel like there's high council here. Um, almost galactic oh. i'm not super familiar with the galactic so um but they come from a far distance okay um the galactic council is also called the universal council okay in fact uh ian clayton initially called it galactic council and then his i think he's recently been calling it universal council and, and so does uh, Kim 
call it universal counsel. And my sense is that it's um, um, it's for lack of a better term, it's aliens <laughs> um, from all around the galaxy as well as us. Okay. Um, at first, when I turned around, it was just something big, but I, I'm getting the sense. Um, I'm remembering the uh, the children's book, Where the Wild Things Are, some some sort of big, strange creature. Okay. I'm just writing these things out on the chat. So that we can keep you know, I'm really wondering if galactic and universal aren't actually two different things. Because universal seems so much bigger. Yeah. I think uh, Galactic Council is not the official name of it uh, used in heaven. It's it's Council of something, something. Uh, council. I don't, might have been Council of 70 or something different, but. Oh. Huh. Well, you're sensing, um, Karen, that it could be larger than just the galaxy yeah like universal is even bigger okay. like it encompasses so much more it's just my feeling yeah that's fine that's good thank you and uh, nicholas you're you're i'm sure you're correct that this got some other name yeah i just don't remember the details yeah this yeah. is Third hand information again. Yeah, and you're trying to remember what you read or, or heard. Um, well, I've never been in the larger one. I've been in the what uh, Ian called the Galactic Council. Jane and I and others spent quite a bit of time in it at one time. But um, One thing that sometimes happens is you get invited to come as a, a visitor to observe, to uh, see what's going on and learn how it, it functions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I could see where we also might be asked to appear as uh, because of a particular mandate that we've been working on or have interest in. I was thinking because of that baby encounter, I mean, some of those beings came from very afar, you know, are, we're involved with a larger scope than we, for uh, maybe just in the recent mandates, or maybe in general, we should be in a larger scope, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point to bring that back. Yeah, remember the new baby was not just um, the new humans or the new man, it was also other creatures. And that would be a mandate that would that would uh, be worthy of this kind of council, whatever the proper name for it is, because it would come under the category of restoration of all, right? At a very, very large um, sphere. Mm -hmm. And... The restoration of all is something that the sons of God do. And if you remember back a couple of uh, bench gatherings before, uh, four or five back maybe, um, where we came to uh, a plain area, a flat area near a sea, and it was an area that the sons of God were gathered in. Uh, so I remember that also from one of our previous uh, and previous uh, gatherings, and the sons of God would function in the restoration of all. That's part of remember that the uh, Romans, right? Uh, all the creation is is eagerly awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is um is that the same as priest of uh, God to all creation? Um, I haven't done a whole lot of work on the sons of God. I've been doing 
work on the Son of God, by which I mean, um, when I say work, I mean discovery. Um, the Son of God is a headship, headship position and leads to uh, the high priest in headship over the house of God. Uh, the sons of God is uh, a non-headship position as the much, much more common calling and does uh, um, have to do with restoration of all. And I'm sorry, your question again was uh, priest of the most high God, right? Uh, no. no. Uh, well, I mean, priest of God to all creation of some Ian talks about as opposed Yeshua is our high priest uh, to us. Okay. But we're the priest uh, intermediary, uh, intermediary between God and creation for its restoration. Okay. Uh, potentially. Okay. Um, Nicholas, this is connecting the dots. It would make sense that that would be um, a priesthood that would be associated with the sons of God because they are involved with the restoration of all including the creation seems to be a more of a very high up there something you're aiming for not to near an end yeah, state yeah. I guess. well um i have a sense that we are walking down uh sets of stairs into a a bowl like spot where this council was gathered um I'm waiting to see whether we walk down to the flat surface in the center or whether we are seated part way down, which would be just saw us walking down like you would if you uh, uh, entered the stadium at the highest level and started walking down to the lower level. Kind of like a football stadium or something? Or yeah, a soccer yeah. Stadium. yeah, more. Uh, yeah. more more circular than it is oval or, or rectangular, but yeah, same idea. Yeah, yeah, I see that too. Walking down the aisle, can you see where we and are? That we're, that we're in a group, we're in the aisle, walking down the steps, probably about halfway. Okay. And um, it's like it's the place is filling up. I can smell ocean breeze, which I'm not sure what that means, but... Um, I guess a freshness or, I mean, it kind of smells salty. I don't feel like we're under the water or anything like that. Okay. But um, there's definitely um, a different kind of frequency and vibration that's here. Um, a lot of excitement. Like there's a lot of buzzing going on. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And also, I'm just really pleased to um, have you smelling as well as seeing. That's awesome. Is that something you work in um, regularly or is that something that just happened here all of a sudden? No, it'll, it'll come. Okay, good, good. Thank you. You're welcome. It's just good to know who's, who functions and what, you know. Um, so we're in agreement with you for that to uh, increase smelling. I love Thank that you. ocean breeze salt smell. Hmm. Anybody seeing or sensing even if it's something different? Take a risk and just tell us what you're experiencing. Well, um, <clears throat> so when you start talking about steps and stadiums, I, at first I was, I guess my, I was remembering one of the ones I'd visited in life in college, you know, and it was kind of concrete and underground, but then you talking more i'm remembering one from the opening of some video game but the uh when you mentioned the sea breeze i mean but the uh, point that would stand out for me there is 
well, there was this giant evil enemy creature that came to try to destroy things. I think it was called Sin or something, but that was Final Fantasy X. But um, I'm not sure if my mind's just making associations or jumping to things or is. Mm. That's okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, as you were talking about the ocean breeze again, the thought occurred to me that in that encounter we had as a bench quite a while ago where we were down by the, the by the sea and it was like an encampment of the sons of god that was definitely by the sea which would mean salt salt air so that may be part of what's going on with this ocean breeze that karen is smelling and sensing uh confirming once again that this is this is the sons of god that we're functioning as here You know, as Nicholas was talking, the thing that flashed to me was, you know, there are like sea monsters and uh, sea creatures that in the past I always associated them more with the demonic. But I think there is some that are following Jesus. So there's a two, there's a dichotomy that's there. And I think that's some of them are here in this place that we're at um it's creatures from from all over i mean they i feel like i'm at um one of those star wars type movies or you know sci-fi type movies and and there's all these creatures and they all look different yeah and and so their faces are different but there's not just that there's also um their um their aura i guess um i what i see are like um geometric shapes moving and around them like there's different colors some groups are in the lime green other groups are like a magenta or you know there's like these different kinds of groups and within those groups there are different groups within them so like um, I feel like we're not the only humans here. This is our group, and then there's some others scattered throughout this. There's like different groups here, and we're not the only ones. Like, whatever country, I mean, planet, I don't know what to call it. Yeah. Um, there's other groups here that's from that same place and it's not necessarily that they all know each other yeah and i feel like um deep is here oh awesome she's referring to the deep being uh, deep calls under deep and also the the spirit of God hovers over the deep in Genesis chapter one. Wow, okay. Um, if you draw your attention to what's inside the stadium, uh, have they started or is nothing started yet? Like in my previous association of the video game, they were, it was this kind of underwater sport that was done in midair, but... Uh, they uh let me see what i'm actually seeing though okay it's a good question are we arriving before or arriving during seems to me it's not started quite yet okay Well, um, do you sense that we are to sit, um, as I say it, I'd like to sit in the front aisle, <laughs> the front row of seats, you know? Um, I was going to ask whether we're, we're down on the stage or whether we're seated as part of the uh, seating, and my senses were part of the seating, and my desire would be to sit in the front row. I see us sitting in the middle. Okay. That there's... Um... The front row is reserved for, I don't, 
for a better term, kings and queens, the presidents, the, you know, them, the upper enchilance or something. Okay, we'll call them uh, reserved for leadership then. There you go. That's yeah. a good term. Because we're also kings, but yeah. So we're sitting in the middle row. Are they um kind of marching out uh, down there on the field with the uh, on horses with the pennant, you know? Uh -huh. What do you see, Karen? What I see, it looks like like it's a um a glass mirror or a pool of water. It's really dark and it's it's um it hasn't opened up or come alive yet, you know, kind of like the table sometimes we see and there's like something that happens in the middle of the table like it and it sh shows it's like where everyone's looking down at the the flooring but it's not green like a football field or anything like that and it's not wood like a table but it's like this I don't like mirror mirror on the wall type of deal you know that yep. kind of thing it's it's okay. mystical i can feel like there's i can feel the vibrations of like thunder and lightning and i can now smell like the airs change to something like after a storm that, that you know how the air is like really clean yeah um what as you were talking the sense I got was it's like a um, really, really large bench. Um, I think that's probably what a council is. Uh, it's it's bigger than a bench, and a, and a bench is smaller than a council. But just like our our bench has that area in the middle where things happen, um, it's the same thing for this council. It has this area in the middle where things happen, and it hasn't started yet. Have a desire to come into oneness with the uh, group that's here to honor we honor the group that's here take our place amongst them i can sense an eagerness and an excitement waiting for the for, for this to start I am sensing that somebody has come to a podium or something. There's a, um, somebody is speaking, initial announcement kind of thing. I sense something being given like a scroll or a mandate or something like that. And I think it's being given to all the participants and not just to us. It's more than just being given the agenda. It's being given the, uh, the scroll or the mandate. It's an, an empowering that allows us to participate, not just a, uh, a listing of what's going to happen. It's got authority associated with it. And you may have a sense of unworthiness, um, either morally or ability wise, but this is being given to us as a bench and uh, we wouldn't be here if we weren't considered worthy. Uh, able to do the job that needs to be done. I guess that's why I initially thought of a college stadium because that's where they do the uh, little, the very formal announcements. Okay. What's the name of the stadium again? Well, that was in a and It was, they did the graduation diplomas there and they did the, um, okay. they had some other events like, uh, I think, 
well, they had the career fairs too, but they, when you were meeting your sponsors and that sort of thing for some scholarships and, uh, I guess it was used for sports at other times, but. Yeah, I understand. But it, it's a sport, sports stadium, but it is used for this kind of function as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's a need at this point to press in with desire and faith. You're breaking through unbelief, that kind of thing. Something that would say, you know, who am I to be here kind of thing. Press through that. Come into the clear. Join in with the cheers of the crowd. Okay. I'm sensing that we've broken through as a bench. Just uh, ride my coattails on that if you need to. There's a welcoming going on. Are they about to speak the uh, next item? Good. I'm looking to hear the, the overall mandate here. I'm sensing that the overall mandate is the uh, restoration of creation. And it is a sons of God function. And um, my sense is that this is like the very beginning of that mandate that's happening right now and that we're participating real time and are part of the um, restoration of Creation has a beginning and an end, and this this is the beginning. And we have been invited to be a part of it. I, I sensed like a need to sign something that we are willing to sign up and function in this mandate. And that's one of those things that you sign without realizing without yet knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into other than the overall um, concept of the mandate. But like kingship, you know, you're, when you're crowned, that's when your training begins. And that's where you begin to learn how to function and you don't have your, once you've learned and been trained in all the aspects that you need to be trained to be a fully functioning king, then there's a coronation. My sense is that there's the same thing with respect to this particular council. Uh, this is a very beginning, it's the equivalent of a crowning, and the training will happen over time. Um, and we're not to uh, uh, hold back because we feel untrained. We It's more like we're supposed to um, agree to being trained and, and believe for the training to occur and then let it happen. Now, it, it may not all happen. I'm speaking as an oracle here. Now, it may not ha all happen in a um, uh, in this particular context. You may get some of that training simply by download or in your daily life. I mean, it won't happen necessarily that we're gathered, that you have a sense of being gathered in this place um, every time that you receive training, um, your entire life is training at this point. 
And uh, wherever you are in that continuum, you've been invited here and, and uh, your training will pick up where you are and bring you into this uh, function um, over however long a period of time it takes to do so. Uh, so there's no need to say, well, I'm not trained. Well, of course not. <laughs> it just started. Um, it's just the need to say, yeah, I'm willing to be trained. I'm interested in being trained. I, I accept the mandate. Um, I don't know what I'm getting into, but I trust that uh, it's something that I'm going to be able to do or I wouldn't have been invited here. Um, so that kind of thing. So and this is, this is how I perceived one thing, but uh, some of the servants were going down the aisles handing out popcorn, which I interpret as revelation. Uh, being seed and all okay but uh, besides oh. the uh thing we had to sign um plus which popcorn is fun <laughs> oh yes yes so we don't want to see work as being uh drudgery you know um what work when you're given a mandate and when you're working with god is meant to be joyful and fun so uh, we may need to trade out of our concept of work being um uh drudgery kind of thing or unpleasant or um, anything less than joyful and into seeing it as being uh, I'm thinking of Yeshua I delight to do your will oh my God which means it's going to be a delight to do it you know um, it's not going to be like uh, going to work and putting your eight hours in because you have to because you need the money and um, it's not really what you want to be doing it's just the best thing you can find it's not that kind of thing. It's, it's the kind of thing that happens when you uh, find just exactly what fits you. And it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, that's what this is going to be for us. Very festive, for sure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Festive, yeah. Way down in the stadium, uh, there were kind of off on the side, and there were a couple little uh, people blowing horns. I kind of see this as sort of like the little parts of the ceremony or pre-time show or whatever, but, uh, or horns, that, uh, well, I meant trumpets, actually. Okay. That's usually an announcement kind of thing. Well, depending on what they're playing. Just a small part of everything, though. Okay. Andy, what do you what do you see and sense? Or are you in a place where you're able to speak or not? Excuse me. Yeah, um just a really festive. Environment. Very not good. really seen much, but this is a very festive. Yeah, it doesn't have to be seen. It can be heard. It can be just sensed, like you know, but you don't know how you know. You just know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, go ahead and speak that out. Um, the more you speak anything like that out, um, it starts a flow going, and the more you give out and speak out, the more you'll be given, and and you'll get more. And don't. Um, I mean, Karen functions in one way and Nicholas functions in another way and I function in another way and you function in another way. And it's all part of the uh, pieces of the puzzle that we as a bench bring together. And we we need every part of the, uh, every all the pieces need each, each one functioning. And uh, thank you for taking the risk okay. and speaking that out. 
I'll let you know this, Condi, but I doubted myself a lot today until I decided to just stop doing that. But uh, that was part of the breakthrough <laughs> part, but the bill yeah, is coming. May yeah, maybe just different focus. Yeah, this is a particularly uh, big thing. So I, I was fighting the same thing. When I talked about having to push through that barrier, yeah. that, that was me feeling exactly the same thing. You know, that that kind of, who am I to be here that kind of stuff, you know? Or yeah. Uh, it's not mixed in as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That thing's out Mixture there. Emotion, it, I think, yeah. Yeah, it comes against every one of us. Um, and the thing that breaks us out of that thing is, is simply the experience of pushing through and and doing it. I'm still, you know, I'm still got a little resistance here that I'm pushing against. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's good. This is big. I've never been in a place this big. Uh, this is really big. Uh, not in a corporate place. I've been in individual places that are big, but not corporate where um, my performance could be compared to somebody else's conformance performance, which is that old, old thing in Romans where it says, don't compare yourself to others, right? <laughs> um which is what we've been taught to do in school for all those years, you know? I got a B, they got an A, you know? Or, or I got an A, they got a B, or, or I got a C, or uh, whatever it may be. It's all comparison of others. And, and Romans tells us just not to do that. Uh, just be yourself. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm speaking to myself as well as everybody else here. So I feel like um, we have been getting downloads okay. and and it's like a lot of it is like new information needs to get absorbed and, is, and sorted out, but it's not going to be happening all right now. Yep. And um, when you had said that, you know, to push through, I saw myself walking down the stadium like I was being pushed yep. from behind to go further you know and I don't one who likes to be in the front seat yep. I just don't and I prefer to go more in the middle because then I could see all that's going on in in both realms and when I'm so up close I personally can't see that well and I felt like I was like being brought too close I couldn't see and the, I could feel like the frequencies was so intense like my head is still vibrating wow. from the intensity of it while you're talking I'm uh, comparing it to the experience of sitting right up to the front in the, in the movie theater where you're in the very front row and it, you have to like look up at the screen you really can't really see the whole thing quite it's not quite the right place to be i understand mm -hmm. um, yeah thank you for mentioning the frequencies being intense so this is good to be up front we may not be able to see anything everything with our our spiritual eyes but there are other senses that you can use that will again i'm work, speaking as an oracle that will work for you in the front row um, and just simply functioning in frequencies and soaking them in like being a um in a tanning studio or out in the sun, soak in the sun, sunlight, that kind of thing. Just soak it into your being. Let it come all the way through you in, into the very deep parts of your being. I feel a little bit of joy with this, but just like at the diploma graduation ceremony, they're going to line everybody up and you're going to go everybody's going to get up onto the stage there uh one by one you know as they hand over something but uh you know they they, they line the people up then they hand the first person the thing they get off the stage the next one goes up you know so i mean we're, you're gonna be standing up close for quite a while on that line okay and uh, that sense of being in line one at a time coming to a place can be a commissioning kind of thing where the group is being commissioned as a group, but each person individually is being commissioned as well, personally. Uh, so we got a sense to get in the line and, and uh, work our way to the front or 
wait our turn, let's put it that way. I've had this experience in the commissioning chancellor's house of, of it being exactly the same thing as going up on the stage for a graduation and having the diploma given to us. That was a, the experience that we had as being commissioned in the commissioning chancellor's house. I've got a, a scroll now. Then you go sit down in your seat again afterwards. I feel so overwhelmed. Like I really am fighting the urge to run back up the stadium to be in the middle. <laughs> yep. um, like the responsibility is going to be tremendous. And uh yeah, and this sense of I don't know if I can do this. Okay. Feeling is being washed over me. And and yet I can still feel this hand on my shoulder. Like keeping me from running up the stairs. There you go. That's the Godhead in one way or another, maybe not directly. You know, they may have used a um, delegated person or being, but um you are here by destiny. And I don't think anybody in this scenario is going to be having the, in and of themselves, going to have the feeling that I'm exactly in the right place where I'm supposed to be right this very moment. There's going to be that sense of I'm. I'm... But I feel like Jane's supposed to be here because she carries something in our group. She does. So I feel like. Uh, she's just here by proxy right now. Yes, and when she listens to this, she will join in and she'll probably tell us what she encountered, uh, which will be of great benefit to all of us. But Jane, we honor you and we do acknowledge that you carry something that is uh, a key for all of us. Um, it's like uh, we're all one, but you... Um, carry it for us. Is that representative is the word I'm looking for of all of us. No, no, no. I feel more like we're on our coattails. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very interesting to hear what she has to say when she encounters this. Jane, you will break through into encounter with this. Just have a sense of moving all the opposition away for you so you're able to break right through and push in there and encounter it. Here comes Jane right on cue. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the beep, but I did. There's a beep saying that she just arrived. Waiting for her um, microphone. You've hi, Jane. Summoned. Oh, hi, guys. Sorry, I totally uh, forgot the time. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, you've actually just arrived right on cue. Uh, we were talking. Uh, let me update you. Anybody else that wants to help update? We're in a large stadium kind of thing. We are in a council that we've been invited to. We've walked down from the higher uh, parts of the council down the aisle to the very front. Um, there's been various ceremonies and kinds of things. Then there was a, everybody went up front one-on-one um, -on -one to receive a, a commissioning kind of thing. The sense that we have is that it's um, universal council or something along those lines, uh, bigger than galactic anyway. And um, um, sons of God, uh, we're functioning as sons of God here. Um, several different clues that gave us that sense. And we were just saying that uh, we... Um, we have a sense that we needed to have you here. 
um, because we ride your coattails uh, on, in this particular uh, area. So uh, that's where we are at this point. We've all, all encountered up, uh, a sense of unworthiness that we've had to push through. Um, and uh, Karen was describing that um, she's being pushed from behind to be in the front row, or that's not where she wanted to be. She wanted to be about halfway up. And we've all acknowledged that we have a sense of, of um, uh, unworthiness or uh, inability. Um, but we've also been aware that this is like a crowning with respect to the council. It's the very beginning and the training begins uh, right now. So, um, and, and the training we realize is gonna be, a lot of it will be in the course of our life, uh, living our lives and it, it will, um, some of it's been downloads that we'll, we'll be, we've already received that we will um, unpack at a later time. Anything else that you have a sense to add so Jane can catch the, up? The other thing was commissioned likely has to do with the restoration of all things. Yeah. I think you covered it pretty well otherwise. Yeah, the restoration of all, especially creation, because the, the, the sons of God, um, creation waits for, eagerly, eagerly awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, wow, thank you. That's really exciting. This is exciting. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, all the strange creatures are here too, so that's a, yeah. being, uh, being a very broad, broad scope of place. Yeah, it's actually, uh, this, this encounter is summing up several other encounters we had. Where, remember the one we had down by the uh, sea where the sons of God were like camped down by the sea? And the other one we had were the, uh, the new man, which was new cre creatures, because it wasn't just man, it was new creatures as well. Um, those two encounters are being wrapped up in this one. They were preparation for this one. Um, the, the new creature is here. Uh, in in the uh, in this council. Hmm. I also got word from uh, Kim Gogan today that um, there were these ninth density uh, beings that are really coming to help us. About one hundred twenty thousand of them, almost. She said almost angelic, and. Um, they're actually replacing now all the people in the White House wow. with the good guys. So we've accelerated massively now. And and also all the CEOs and everything of the corporations will be the good guys and there'll be no kind of like persuading bad guys to change policy. Um, so she said we should see a huge increase in restoration. Um, when you're talking, that sounds like the kingdom uh, coming into mm. to be. Yeah. Um, where, where God's removing all the ones that are in opposition to him, all the enemies, uh, and replacing them with his key people. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, she had spoken about this in the last several uh, of her uh, I think they call them world situation reports, how they're, they're a threshold has been crossed where, where uh, basically God was um, fed up and, and not going to wait anymore for these people to change, to repent. And there, there was a, a going around to every one of them and telling them this is what it's going to be. And um, if you step off the track again, you'll, You'll you'll lose your life. Um, so this is this is very very key point in the process where where um, replacement of all these people is happening. Uh, maybe a few will join the program, but uh, most of them are going to be uh, removed and then replaced by the people. So very very exciting point in history. Which would explain why this particular council is being able to uh, is is be, is uh, convening at this point. Go ahead, Jane. So, is the the function of the council is to to what? My sense was it was restoration of creation. 
the sons of God functioning to restore creation. Right. But um, I certainly am open to anybody else um, and what you see and sense and hear and, and feel and so on. Push through that resistance you'll come into encounter. So we'd go here to do restoring acts. It seems to be that this is a uh, large corporate council, the equivalent of a bench, but at a larger scale. Because Karen saw that down in the center, there's this open area that's like a, a mirror or um, sea of glass kind of thing that hasn't yet, um, at the time that she spoke, it hadn't yet opened or begun to function, uh, much like when we're seated in our bench and there's that area in the middle, that circle where the action is. Um, so it's just like a larger version of a bench. Um, and uh, yeah. And confetti flying about. Yeah, we, did that, we sense the celebration in a very joyful and high frequency mood and uh, not just mood, but just very high frequency. I'm also sensing like uh, the curtain opening on a play kind of thing going on right now. I'm not sensing that we move, uh, get up and move forward. I'm sensing we stay in our seats. I agree. Yeah, but again, we are in the front row. And we found that in the front row, just seeing doesn't necessarily work as well as it would at a distance where you can get a better big picture view. But you do have to function in frequencies and other other uh, functions to be able to get the revelation uh, as opposed to uh, uh, depending upon seeing. It's like too close to see the big picture. I'm seeing, I think it's a being. Uh, by the way, Melchizedek was here and Yeshua was here. That's what Karen saw. Um, seeing a being, I also seeing uh, a, a backdrop behind them of uh, like darkness that is um, mystery. Senses that they're large. Something's coming out of that, um, the darkness, the mystery. Uh, as uh, like the equivalent of one of those astronomy pictures of the clouds and way out in space, dark clouds and light clouds and that kind of stuff. In this case, it's a dark cloud. Uh, Karen also sensed that the deep being is here. Which makes complete sense because that was part of how the creation was originally created. So restoring it would involve the deep being also. So I'm smelling frankincense, myrrh, and hyssop. Wow. I know mirror drips from your hands. Frankincense is associated with kingship, isn't it? 
was presented to Yeshua as a baby? So, I get a sense that uh, that's coming from the censor being swinged around by the priestly guy who's changing the atmosphere, I guess. So. Ah, okay. And I've got a sense to, to breathe it in so that it enters into you. Whether or not you smell it, just breathe it in. More solemn now. Now oh, the mood. Yeah. Do you, do you sense we should ask for a mandate to do here? Um, we did sense that we were given a um, scroll, which I think was commissioning. Um, okay, you want to ask for a mandate? I just got the sense for that, yeah. Okay. Put your desire on the mandate and we'll ask for it. So we ask for the mandate for our particular bench. I'm just realizing there may be some um, uh, subcommittee kind of things going on, you know? We were invited as a bench. So we're not just here individually, we're here as a, uh, as a bench. So we could be um, like, you know, um, like, so let's say like a large airplane being assembled, parts are, or a spacecraft, let's use that example. This part is assembled in this city and this part is assembled in that city. Um, there could be mandates given out to benches to do a particular part of the overall function of the council. I'm seeing a candlestick. It is not lit. I'm, I'm well aware from recent study and uh, revelation that an ecclesia becomes an ecclesia when the candlestick is given to it. Um, and of course the candlestick is lit at the time it becomes an ecclesia. I wonder if there's one for, I don't sense that this candlestick is for the overall council. I think it's for our sub group function as a bench. Anybody get more rev on that? Well, I think they gave me a match. Okay. Let me hand that over to you. Um, no, it's given no. to you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, but uh Yeah, I sense we um about lighting, um sort of bringing more ecclesias into function. Before you said about the ecclesias when I saw the candlestick, I saw the same thing. What color is the candlestick? Um, my sense was, well, first off, it's not completely lit because it's not lit. Um, but my sense was that it was metallic and uh, possibly like pewter kind of color. 
Um, but it might actually be silver if it was in the light. This is a very strange match. It's kind of like one of those little sparkler fireworks, you know, you, ah. that you hold. Where the little colors coming off, you know, off the tip. Okay. Kind of like the uh, those things you use to light a grill with. Let me get a picture, I guess. That's okay. Um, I'm going to suggest we all put our hands over Nicholas's hand. He's got the the uh, match-like thing in his hand. And uh, together, actually light the match and use the match to light the candlestick. And I do see the candlestick now lit. So I sense rather than this being one ecclesia, we just give that candlestick to many. Oh, like like uh, passing a candle, uh, the, mm. passing the light from one candle to another. Yeah. Okay so, okay. so give the candlestick. Yeah, we want many many ecclesias forming who are ready then to move into yes. the age of Melchizedek. Yeah. And the Ecclesias I was learning was also over all businesses and government. So it's like they had a role in all sorts of things. It wasn't just about growing in your walk yep. as, as a son of God. Well, uh, I seem to be done with the match. They took it uh, somewhere else for somebody else. Oh, good. Okay. So they'll use it now. So I just ask the council to just um, release these candle sticks and bring into creation the the hunger, the formation of these um, ecclesias and the the leaders to to have the time, the walk, the strength, the health to facilitate them and to bring these ecclesias into a house. I agree and amen to that. And um, I'm re realizing that uh, when an ecclesia actually overcomes at the first letter level and becomes an ecclesia and is given a candlestick, at the same time, the ecclesia is given, given uh, an angel that is a star in Yeshua's right hand. Um, and I've been asking the question last little couple of days here now, um, whether something similar would happen at higher levels when you've got a group and we've just now been given a candlestick at that higher level. So it seems to me there also would be an angel at the higher level as well. Um, though I'm aware we already have Uriel, right? Do we still get a, a new angel or does the angel that is with OUB actually has now a new, I don't know, sash? or something where he too has gotten a higher position. I think the second option is correct, Karen. Good point. He's uh, upgraded, right? That's the word, thank you. Yeah. Though it's already interesting that um, Uriel is one of the righteous watcher angels. He's at the son of God level, the Ben Elohim as an angel. He's one of that kind, which is exactly what you would expect to have as um, functioning as sons of God. Um, it's almost like we've been in the process of growing into him 
like you were given a, a set of clothes that are several size too big and you've been growing up into that set of clothes, we've, we've been given an angel that is actually at the uh, Ben Elohim level, um, which is the son of God level. He, the angel is the son of God and we're sons of God also. Um, and we've actually been growing up into the angel that we've already been given. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. To uh, make sure that's the name of the angel assigned to OUB? Um, Uriel, isn't there one more, Jane? Um, I always saw one called Jazeel. Jazeel. Mm. Okay. Did I approximately spell it correct? Um, I can't see it. J A Z W E L. Yeah, that's what I've got. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that'll be interesting. I'll do some research on that name. So there's two. Yeah, well, you usually get them arcing with each other, and I've always seen two arcing. Oh, okay. Um, this is long term, Nicholas, that Jane has been aware of this even before I uh, came on the scene. She's been aware of, of those angels. But it's no mistake that Uriel is at the son of God level. And I would expect that Jaziel is also. Oh, I don't know that for sure. Um, Enoch was trained by the righteous watcher angels during the time that he was taken up the first time. So these angels also do have a training function with respect to training the sons of God. I really sense this, there's a lack of huge lack of confidence like stopping people being leaders or um, that's just not in line with, you know, how big the job is and their abilities. It's just sort of almost spirit, spiritual nonsense, really. <clears throat> Across the board, Jane? Yeah, yeah, and that's why we're not seeing a lot more um, ecclesias sort of come up and and a lot of people with it, of experience come through. We were experiencing that same kind of feeling uh, as we entered the, stadi the stadium uh, to, and uh, had to push through or be pushed from behind to sit in the front row. Uh, so even we have had that in this encounter. Mm -hmm. I would suspect that that is one of the major stumbling blocks to functioning at this level. Yeah, you know, we were asking for more stumbling blocks. We've just got one. Yeah, feeling like um, I was feeling like I was unworthy of such a huge task or a huge responsibility. I actually wanted to hike it back up to the middle of the stadium. My issue uh, was actually slightly different. It wasn't, I was feeling I wasn't up to the level of those in this meeting. Uh, and uh, I didn't have any problem with the stadium because like, I didn't perceive that much, I guess. But I mean that that's still like not feeling up to the level, you know. But yeah, and my my response to that one was that it's a corporate bench level that's needed to function, not necessarily each of us individually having to be at that level to be able to function at it individually. Um, so that should take some of that concern from both of you, Nicholas and Karen. But it's not 
not just you individually standing there in, in where you are on your journey at the moment in your personal journey. Yeah, Condi, yes, yes. And we've broken through that, so we don't want to speak it back into being, but but and I'm, I'm just correcting myself, but um, yeah, we're we're worthy to do this. Good, yeah. I'm remembering um, the Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter five. The Lamb is there, and um, the living beings and the el the twenty four elders, and then all of creation say, "Worthy is the Lamb." It's like worthiness is imparted to the Lamb by the living creatures and the 24 elders and all of cre creation. Um, it's actually a trade into the lamb of worthiness. Um, and then it says worthy to, and then it lists off uh, worthy to receive is what it was. Worthy to receive uh, glory, honor, power, uh, blessing, uh, riches, strength, wisdom, uh, thanksgiving. I think there's eight of them. Um, anyway, my point is the same kind of thing will happen to us. The worthiness is given to us. It's traded into us. Uh, the commit, I'm speaking as an oracle now, the commission, the scroll that you were given when you went up on the stage to be commissioned uh, includes the worthiness. Uh, the worthiness is given to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Connie says it's gone now and strong sense of worth and authority now. Awesome. Awesome. I wonder if we should do an act to bring this worthiness to all those new ecclesias. Yeah. Yeah. And to the others, too, in this in this gathering. Hmm. Hmm. Everyone okay with that one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So what would the act be? I think we impart the worthiness that we're feeling to them. Mm. And also the need. I think when you see a need big, you don't focus on yourself. You see, you focus on the others and what needs to be done. Say that again, Jane. When you see the need, you don't focus on yourself. You focus on the need. Ah, yes. And also you focus on the you, what you want is the dependence on the seven spirits to equip you. You don't want to be doing it in your own strength because that's mm -hmm. where the power comes from. So the less worthy you feel, the, the more of it is a, is a strength to draw on heaven. Okay. So sure. it's that understanding rather than feeling like oh you know i've had all the training in the world i'm all equipped i didn't yep. have any training i mean i just saw the immense need and i saw the dependence and i was willing to depend on the the seven spirits to to guide me and and i i never saw how any encounters groups worked apart from one little one might have listened to one or two and i didn't feel i could model that at any rate and the rest was just purely given by infused knowledge. There we go. Week in, week out. This feels like a long-term mandate that we're not going to do in one gathering. But yes, um, can we impart all this then to the others in the gathering? the council here as well as the new ecclesias yeah what about the ribbons of um the colors that are representative of each um of the seven spirits of god good let's give those to them as well well i feel it's just the spirit of understanding really we just mandate them to 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 bring this understanding that's so obvious through scripture but for some reason it gets you lost. don't uh do you feel like flying around and dropping pixie dust on everybody or <laughs> oh, oh, I, always, I always feel like that that's my my <laughs> type of encounter <laughs> yeah 
You right know, um, the fear of the Lord is what I seem to be wrapping myself up in. So I'm not afraid of what man has to say or. So dropping pixie dust and giving out ribbons here, whatever function you sense to do. For sure, we have to do it as a group. We just want to use spirit of understanding to release, release this understanding and uh, take away that fear of performance. Yeah. Bring in the fear of de of not depending on heaven. It's um, what you as you're talking, Jane. And, um, at a lower level, the scripture says, "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me." Um, but now this is higher level of, of being strengthened. Probably the word and the lamb doing the strengthening at this level. Or being strengthened as the word or the lamb at this level. I think we should add the uh, the frequency of being the word of the lamb in with the pixie dust. Okay. And the extra dose of, um, what did you call it, Jane? Uh, word of knowledge? No. Understanding. Understanding, yeah. I'm um I'm seeing a gallows for hanging. And it may have to do with that clean up of the enemies. I would think. My sense is that this cleanup is um Part of that cleanup that happens just before the first resurrection, cleanup of all the enemies um, having to do with cleaning up um, Babylon the Great, all those that were participating in that in leadership and are unrepentant. Um, there's another one at the very end of the thousand years, but there's this one just before the thousand years of, of, of removing enemies from the earth. Kind of like a war tri crimes trial at the end of a, a war. And that is a, a lamb function that's 
removing the enemies that are in leadership in Mystery Babylon the Great, with the exception of those very few who repent. I'm seeing this whole new environment of um, of the good being in charge now is allowing a massive thousands and hundreds of thousands of ecclesias to form. Seem like a you know like a trail of flame, one lighting another, lighting another. Hundreds of thousands of ecclesias. Yeah, it could be a. Like there's a whole new shift. Yeah, whole new ball game. Yeah. No longer will it be the odd ecclesia and nobody knows what an ecclesia is. It'll be, oh, yes, you know, an accepted part of society. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing recently that ecclesias are um, central to the plan of God. It's not just something that's old. In the Ecclesia age. It is a transition between uh, the Kingdom Age and the Age of Melchizedek, but it's a it's a necessary transition. Um, and Ecclesias are to be honored. Uh, and along with what you're saying, Jane, that would mean the process of overcoming as an Ecclesia is going to be much easier too, because much of the opposition that 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 uh, frequently sabotages an ecclesia so that they don't overcome is being removed. Um, mm. So it won't be just like, like you said, it won't be just a few ecclesias here and there struggling around along. It's going to be victorious ecclesias, many, many, many victorious ecclesias that are the um, the seedbed for kingship. Uh, all that preparation for kingship happens in, in that Ecclesia age. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, four chambers of the heart, the overcoming with the seven letters to the seven Ecclesias, the uh, six elementary principles of Christ, the Ecclesia age, uh, all these things happen uh, to prepare the bride to uh, become the wife who was a king. And I, I see that this can be like an, like an escalator or something like that, where it's just um, happening at a rapid pace that's not halting at all, uh, producing prepared brides that can now move into kingship. I'm seeing an awful lot being coronated as well. Wow. I see the knowledge that the kings are ruling now needs to get out. So it's time for the king's ruling. Moving beyond, you know, presenting to cook cake, to presenting to benches. Mm -hmm. Heralding of kingship. Mm. That in itself brings great confidence. Yep.
Oh, I just saw another stumbling block, Bill. So what? The fear of not another stumbling block. Okay. And it's the fear of not being able to see. Yep. Mm. And not recognizing that people see in different ways and trying to copy how someone else sees when you're very different. Yep. That's a really big one. Mm. That frees every one of us up just simply to be ourselves. Mm. And see as we've been made to see. Mm. Now, I've even fallen into that trap recently. Sure, I've been doing that for years. <laughs> I think pretty much every one of us would admit that that's something we've done. Well, that was what I was talking about at the start of the meeting. I mean, doing that. I didn't phrase it that way, but... Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yep. So, these guys, uh, you mentioned the coronation, and I started paying attention to that, but I mean... Normally, I thought I had to do something or trade something, but I mean, they're just coming around and flying by. They take this crown off, replace it with a better version of it, and I did it several times, and it's like very easy because I'm not doing anything. There you go. Mm. Yeah, no, you don't have to trade anything. It just happens if you've done sufficient mandates or reached a sufficient level. And um, some of it could have been done on the night watch by your spirit without you even being aware of it, too. Mm. Yeah, but I'm, I think my spirit's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't always report back and tell you what it's been doing, either. <laughs> Maybe that's my fault for not asking, but... I have many nights that I give it permission to do the night watch and then never follow up or hear back on it. Oh, well, I gave it permanent permission a long time ago. I didn't uh, realize people didn't do. I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, automated permission, right? So you don't have to do it manually every night. Hmm. Yeah. You don't want to get religious. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I said it, I should say me, is you yeah. should consider self, yourself your, the spirit rather than your soul. I mean, yep. Anything else that we're sensing or seeing or hearing or aware of or know? Oh, well, um, for a while now, the uh, little groups have been, well, uh, crowd split in little groups and they were doing their own things and a couple groups did leave, uh, but uh, I, I wonder if anything else will happen in the center, I mean, on the stage, but uh, little groups are doing their thing. So nothing yet on the stage. So preparation. Mm -hmm. Considering a couple of groups left, I don't know if that's uh, that might be it for today. Okay. Oh, okay. I was I was interpreting that that they had. Um, okay, you're saying that things are over and they're leaving. I was wondering whether it was more like um, they had like rejected what was going on or something or hadn't been able to push through to see that they were worthy or something. Oh, no, no. Oh, it wasn't that? Okay. Okay. 
I sense there's going to be a whole new flow. You know, we've sensed for a, quite a number of years a restriction of flow. Yep. Uh, that would be a whole new flow from now, a whole new time. I mean, we had a we had a, a point where I was setting up these messenger groups and I had to just keep creating new groups. I mean, there were like 250 people per group and people were just joining like that. Bam, 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 bam. It was incredible flow. And it has, I mean, it's been dispersed because there are more houses now. Um, so every house doesn't, see the same flow as the first early forerunners did so you have to accept that um, but nevertheless there's no reason why each house couldn't get a lot more flow mm -hmm. so are we complete for today I think so. Okay. Any uh, debriefing kind of things? Um, looking back that you can now sense has happened, the kind of summary statements that Jane was making there, sense a whole new flow. I do sense that we're going to need to um, not allow ourselves to fall into a sense of unworthiness when we leave. Um, many times in the past, under an anointing or an encounter or something, I was able to do something and then afterwards I could feel, um, looking back, wondering how I could or that kind of thing. So we do need to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to uh, step away from the sense of worthiness and, and to remember that it's not based upon what we've done. It's based simply on what's being given to us. Uh, that this is based upon heaven's confidence in us as opposed to our self-confidence. And we need to maintain that even after we've left this corporate gathering and the bench meeting. For me, one of the lessons was um, I don't need to stand on the edge of the group. I can be in the center of it, too. Was, I was standing on the far left of the group when I was given the candle. That was uh, just convenient occasion or perhaps because uh, that was demonstrating like unconscious unworthiness, you know, where. Yep. Oh, that's funny, because I saw you in the middle of us, Nicholas. I was afterwards. Awesome. Well, in the initial sitting of the seats, I wasn't on the far left, but... Yep. Um... I'm sensing this that what has happened today is is a door has opened. A door for what? Um, th this whole council and such. It's a beginning. Let's put it that way. Mm. It's a beginning. Um, and I had thought of this previously, but didn't mention it. That we're actually functioning in the realm of the beginning here when we're doing this. Oh. Um, creation and making happens in the realm of the beginning, but I think that restoration also happens in the realm of the beginning. Do you know who was handing out the uh, stuff on stage? Or who was doing the speech for that matter? I didn't at that point who the person was at the podium. I didn't have a sense at that point as to who it was that we can take a look and see anybody can uh, sense who it was. Thought occurred to me it might have been Melchizedek. Hmm. 
the 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 uh, created being Melchizedek. Anybody see who it was? Don't hesitate to say something different because I'm I'm. Well, you got to get to the uh, right point in time because I think there was more than one speaker. Oh, okay. But, I mean, Yeshua. Yeah, sure. yeah. Well, the three that we sensed were present were Yeshua, um, Melchizedek the being, and the deep being. Those are the three that we sensed as being present. If it was the deep being as one of the speakers, there would be a deep calling unto deep function going on that would draw you in. Uh, deep calls to you as a deep, which uh, deepens the deep within you, if you want to put it that way. Anything else? I see a huge round of applause. Ah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Excitement for the next phase. I think we'd all got battle weary and we now need to to have the anticipation of a huge flow of restoration. Yeah. Ooh. I'm starting to think those groups I saw leave and they didn't actually leave. They just went to stand quite a far off. Uh. Well, I like our position up here in the front row. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. If we stop the recording, can we just talk about Facebook Live duration sure. after? Sure. Let's hmm. stop it right now. <laughs>